Hey babes and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new around here. If you are new, I would love if you could just subscribe to my channel by clicking that little red button down below the video. It helps me out so much every time one of you clicks that button and I really do appreciate it. All right, well, happy St. Patrick's Day. I am super excited to bring to you my St. Patrick's Day recipes that I love to make and they are super easy, very delicious, huge crowd pleasers, and even my little babies gobbled them up this year. So let's start with what I use for the corned beef seasoning. Now, a lot of people just use the packet that comes with the corned beef, and that's fine. I actually purchase corned beef that doesn't even come with the packet of seasoning because I never use it. Um, so I like to make my own. It's very simple to make as long as you have the correct ingredients. I'll have everything listed down below in the description box for you guys, but I will also go through it all with you as I'm doing it. Later in this video, you're going to see that we are toasting these seasonings, um, the like whole seeds and everything. So that is why I am putting them into this tiny little pot. Um, so you don't have to use one quite this small, but definitely put all of your whole seasonings into a pot so that you can toast them up. We start with a tablespoon of mustard seeds. Then we follow that up with one teaspoon of full black peppercorns. Um, then you are going to next be adding in a half to one teaspoon of anise seeds. I really enjoy the flavor of anise, so I put the full teaspoon in with my mix. Um, as you can see here, I was opening a brand new bottle here and I spilled all over my countertop. So when you are working at home, try to be careful when you're opening up those lids so you don't make a big mess like I did. Then you're gonna wanna go ahead and grab eight whole cloves, so just piece them out. You can add a few more or a few less depending on if you like the flavor of cloves or not, but I just use eight in my recipe. Once you have your cloves in there, you're going to grab your whole cardamom pods and you're going to grab about four or five of them, maybe even six um, if you like that kind of fragrant flavor that they give. You can add a couple more in there. Up next are your bay leaves and you're actually going to not toast your bay leaves. That's pretty much the only one you're not going to toast. You could if you wanted to. Um, but you're just going to be adding those in a little bit later. You'll see me put them in with the rest of it just for the effect, but I actually did not toast the bay leaves. Um, yeah, you just wanna grab four of those out and set them aside. Then we're gonna grab our crushed red pepper and you're gonna wanna take about one teaspoon of crushed red pepper and add it on in. So normally I use half a teaspoon of ginger in here, but I decided today to get this sweet ginger garlic seasoning that I saw and I couldn't pass it up. So it turned out to be a very nice addition. If you guys have this at your store, I definitely recommend it, but you can definitely just add half a teaspoon of ground ginger instead. Once you have all your ingredients in there, go ahead and mix them up. Then you're just going to toast them over a low heat for about two to three minutes until you start to smell the fragrance from especially like the mustard seed will start to smell very fragrant and that's when you'll know that it's time to take them off the heat and then we can get them blended up. So now you're going to take a large pot or Dutch oven and you are going to get your corned beef out and I recommend putting the fatty side up um, when you are cooking. That way the moisture from the fat can drip down into the rest of the meat while it's cooking. You're then going to pour in enough water that you cover just the top of it. You don't have to have it completely like drowning, but definitely get it so that the top of the meat is covered. 
Once you have enough water in there to cover your meat, you are going to add in your seasoning. Just sprinkle it on top and also sprinkle some along the sides so that it gets into the water as well so it can really form a nice broth. You are going to put it on a medium to medium high heat and cover it so that it boils. And once it starts boiling, you are gonna turn that heat down to a simmer and you are gonna let it sit for about two hours. And while that's cooking, you're gonna to wanna to cut up your carrots. I use baby carrots because I don't like peeling carrots, so baby carrots come pre-peeled, but you can use any kind you want. Next up, you are going to cut up your red potatoes. I use about like 16 really small ones, but you can use however many you think is gonna feed your family. And as you can tell, my red potatoes were a little bit old. I had to cut some of the eyes out of them, but they turned out just fine. You're gonna remove the core from your cabbage and then you are going to just cut it into kind of small wedges. You do not need to dice it up really small. It tastes very good if you leave it kind of big like that. This year for dessert, Chloe wanted to make some jello, so we decided to get some green jello. Jello is very easy to make. The directions are on the back, and all you really need is two cups of boiling water and two cups of cold water. And you mix it all together and let it sit in the fridge for about four hours. Couldn't be easier and definitely a fun one to do if you have little kiddos because they can help. And that is always awesome to have your kids helping you in the kitchen. About this time is when I went over to check and see and we definitely were boiling so I went ahead and turned down that temperature to a very little simmer so that it could cook up and I set my timer for two hours. Once your timer is set for two hours, try and keep it in your mind that at about 20 minutes to you're going to want to throw your carrots in with your corned beef and about 10 minutes to you're going to want to throw in the cabbage. So that way you still get those items cooked up really well, but they don't end up overcooking. A lot of people overcook their cabbage and it gets really soggy and this way it's still nice and crispy. When you've got about 35 to 40 minutes left on that timer, you're gonna go ahead and start your potatoes. Unless you wanna cook your potatoes in the oven, you can roast them if you want, or you can even add them to your corned beef mixture, but I prefer to cook them separately in a pot and make them into a mashed potato rather than have them be boiled or roasted potatoes. But however you wanna do your potatoes is totally up to you. I wish that you guys could smell how amazing this smells right now. Like, it's got about 38 minutes left and all of those spices, like, all of those spices are just like coming together and it seriously, you guys, oh my God. Oh my God, I mean. I'll give you a sneak peek. It smells divine. So good. Now that we have about 24 minutes left is when I decided to add these in, but you can even add in your carrots as close to 20 minutes before the corned beef is ready. Um, after about 10 more minutes, I added in my cabbage. I like to let my cabbage cook in there for about 10 to at most 15 minutes so it still gets a lot of the flavor from the broth but it does not get super soggy when you eat it. And is it St. Patrick's Day if you don't have a Guinness? Of course I can't have Guinness because I'm gluten free but Ryan and my dad were able to. So here you will see my Guinness pour. I know that people are going to judge this, but I, my family likes to have a big head on their Guinness. And so that is the way that we pour it. Most beers, we don't use a big head, but for Guinness, we always do. For the mashed potatoes, I use plant butter because my mom is dairy free and so is Miles. So we didn't use any dairy products in them. 
We used plant butter and I also used some almond milk. And then for the seasoning, I like to add salt, pepper, garlic, onion, and paprika. Those are my top five seasonings for a lot of things, but those are always gonna be my potato seasonings. Now the timer went off, I checked everything and decided I wanted the cabbage to soak in the broth a little bit more, so I went ahead and pushed it on down in there and gave it an extra five minutes. So today's cabbage soaked in there for about 15 minutes total, and it was the perfect amount of time. But like I said, sometimes 10 minutes is great too. So definitely just start with 10 and work your way from there. I plated it a couple of different ways depending on how people wanted it. For myself, I just did a plate with potatoes, cabbage, and corned beef. For my mom, I added in some of the carrots. And then for my dad, he had it the same way. And Ryan ended up having it on a sandwich. We did that with some cheese. And then I used rye bread for the sandwich bread because I think it really complements the flavors of the corned beef. Then for dessert, we had the Jello that Chloe requested, and it was very delicious. Um, super simple, easy dessert to make and have, and it's festive because it is so bright green. Thank you so much for watching the first portion, the recipe part of my video. I hope that you enjoyed the corned beef and cabbage recipe, and let me know in the comments below if you've made corned beef cabbage before, is this how you've made it? Have you made it differently? Um, if you are trying my recipe today, let me know that you're trying it. I love to always hear from you guys if you actually enjoy the recipes. So please don't forget to let me know down below. Um, and then for the next part of this video, I wanted to show you guys the outfits that I got for my kids for St. Patrick's Day this year. And they are all from Amazon. So if you haven't bought anything, you still want to buy an outfit, you have time. Amazon has two day shipping, sometimes one day shipping. So um, you definitely still have time. And these are so cute. They are not super in your face like shamrocks, which is normally kind of the way that I go. But this year I went a lot more of a like a muted green and just a kind of very cute theme. I'm hoping to get some cute pictures of the three kids together. So without further ado, here we go. I'll start with Miles. So with Miles, I just got him this super adorable sweatshirt. It says babe on in this kind of like 70s font. Um, so I love this. It is so cute and he can wear it again and again. It's not just for St. Patrick's Day, which is why I loved going that route this year, getting them stuff that they're going to be able to continue to wear. For Mackenzie and Chloe, I got them matching patterns. These were not even from the same Amazon seller. It was wild. So um, the first one, this is Mackenzie's little ruffle shorts and her top has the little ruffle on it too. So they will go like that together. And then if you can kind of see, it's ribbed and then has, it's this like sagey mossy green color just like Miles' sweatshirt. And then it just has these sweet little kind of white flowers on it. And then Chloe's is the same exact fabric, but it's in a bell bottom and her top is this adorable little crop. It's a crop top, <laughs> it'd be so cute. So for hers, it goes like, well, you can't really get them in both in frame, but I'll put them side by side. So she has this little crop top and bell bottoms. I'm so excited to put these on the kids and to be able to get some pictures in them and their coordinating outfits for St. Patrick's Day. So like I said, if you're still kind of looking for an idea and you wanted to go more, not super St. Patrick's theme, but go with the green colors, definitely go ahead and use those links down in my description box. And if you do use my links, um, if you click on them, it really does help me earn a small commission. You don't have to pay anything extra for using them, but I really appreciate it and so does my family. So anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed coming along with us, getting to see what we eat for St. Patrick's Day, what we're going to wear for St. Patrick's Day. 
feel free to let me know in the comments below. Do you guys celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Um, and if not, do you guys have any big holidays that you celebrate during the month of March? Let me know. All right, guys, I love you all so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, babes. I'm <laughs>